Do you use Gmail? Yes. Do you watch videos on YouTube? Yes. Do you search for things on Google? Yes. Then your privacy might be compromised. We're not anti-Google, we love Google. Other videos that we've seen are focused on specific phones and specific operating systems. This is not that video. This video is about how to keep using the Google services you love while putting the control of your data back into your hands. We're gonna start by going to myaccount.google.com. This is where the master settings for your Google account actually live and it works across all your devices. But keep in mind that if you have more than one Google account, you'll have to go into each account individually and change these settings. We're going to start by tapping on the data and privacy tab, scrolling down, and tapping web and app activity. This saves your activity on Google sites and apps, including associated info like location to give you faster searches, better recommendations, and more personalized experiences in maps, search, and other Google services. It sounds benign, but you really need to read the fine print, or in this case, the learn more page. Or the dictionary to find out what the definition of benign is. Web and app activity saves things like your location, your IP address, which browser or app you're using, and what website you just came from. It also saves information like the ads you click on or the things you buy on a website. It can also save information from your device, like the contact names you've recently searched for. And all of this information can be collected even when you're not online. On your phone, scroll down. I like to turn this off completely. If we scroll down, we can tap pause. Google thinks you're coming back, you're not. Why do they want you to leave this on? It's how Google makes most of their money by selling this data to advertisers. If you wanna leave web and app activity on, we highly recommend turning off include voice and audio activity. Audio activity saves audio recordings every time you interact with Google Search, Google Assistant, and Google Maps. It is a little sketchy. I think Google realizes that it is off by default, so well done to them, leave it off. You can also set a schedule to delete your web and app activity after either three months or 18 months or 36 months. I'd opt for the three month option. So on your phone, auto delete, tap on that, and then auto delete activity older than three months, then tap next. Next, let's talk about Google location history. This shares where you go with your devices, even if you're not using a specific Google service. Google collects this information to give you more personalized maps and make recommendations based on the places you've been. Let's tap back upper left hand corner of the screen, scroll down, and tap on location history. If this has been on, you'll see a long list of places you've been with your phone recently. Kind of weird, kind of sketchy. If someone gets a hold of your device, they'll be able to see everywhere you've been and where you go most often. And this is another setting where it's important to read the fine print because Google doesn't even guarantee benefits. They say, when you turn on location history, you may see a number of benefits. And once again, all of this benefit talk and personalized recommendation talk is just them saying, we're going to sell ads that are more targeted to you specifically. To turn off Google location history, tap, turn off, scroll down, and again, we are pausing this feature. I personally use Google Maps because I've had a lot of bad experiences with Apple Maps. I don't use Google location history, it works fine. I don't need those recommendations. Same deal with the auto delete schedule. If you wanna leave it on, we recommend three months because after all, the same places you went three years ago might not be where you're going today. Next up, YouTube history, which saves the YouTube videos you watch and the things you search for on YouTube to give you better recommendations, remember where you left off and more. Now maybe we're biased because we're YouTubers, but I don't really see this as a major privacy issue unless you're sharing your YouTube account with somebody else, you don't want them to see what you're looking at on YouTube. But a lot of times people are logged in with their YouTube account on a TV, for instance. Mm -hmm. I was over at a friend's house recently recently and started looking through their history <laughs> without, without really having any negative intentions, but they shut that down real fast. Let's tap back upper left hand corner of the screen, scroll down and tap on YouTube history, scroll down. And if you want to turn off your YouTube history, just tap that turn off button, scroll down and tap pause. One thing I like about turning this off is that I see unbiased results in Google search and in YouTube search because I don't need to see the same things I've already watched. I wanna see the best results according to what YouTube thinks. We'd love to be a bigger part of your YouTube search history and you can help us out tremendously Whoa. by clicking that subscribe button below this video. Next, we'll talk about personalized ads. Why do all these settings sound like exactly the same thing? It's because they're all geared towards collecting data about you to serve you better ads and make Google more money. Let's tap back upper left-hand corner of the screen, scroll down and tap on my ad center and then tap on the personalized ads button 
and then tap turn off. Tap got it, and you're set. When you turn this off, it'll also turn off personalized ads for YouTube partners, which is basically every website you visit. And I can see the comments now. Won't I see low quality ads? No, you won't. Google can still deliver you contextual ads based on the website you're visiting. Also, Google doesn't let low quality ads into their network. When you see low quality ads on a website, it's not Google's fault. It's that website buying ads from low quality advertisers that are not Google, so. Just stay away from those websites. Next, we're gonna talk about personal results in search. Let's tap back to the previous page, scroll down, and tap on personal results in search. If you share your computer with your family or friends, do you really want them to know everything you've been searching for? If it's your personal computer, I don't really think personalized search results is that big of a privacy issue. I do, I don't like it. Yeah, the issue would be if someone is looking over your shoulder or they stole your device, then they'd see your whole search history anyway. So maybe it is a big privacy issue. And if it's a shared computer, I think there's more of a risk here than just other people seeing your search history. You may have heard this story about how Target figured out a teenage girl was pregnant before her own father did. And the consequences were severe. All she had done was search for a specific product on Target's website that had to do with pregnancy. Her dad saw it and that was not a good situation. Google could start making recommendations based on your search history and those recommendations might not be things you want other people to see. Let's turn off the switch next to show personal results on our phone. It can also be annoying. I was recently searching for a new home and I just went on Zillow and looked at Manhattan apartments that cost $60 million, which is a little out of my price range. And now I'm getting all these recommendations for $60 million apartments, which I do not want. Next, we're gonna talk about Google Fit privacy. These are really only relevant if you have a Google Fit device. We'll just touch on them quickly. Let's tap back upper left-hand corner of the screen, scroll down and tap on manage Google Fit privacy. I completely understand that a lot of people wouldn't want their health and medical information stored in their Google account. Right at the top of the screen, your Fit data. If you tap on Manage Fit Data, you can see the data your Google Fit device has collected about you. And here's where you can delete that data from your Google account. We're not saying that Google isn't secure. They have the best of intentions. But with the amount of companies we've seen get hacked lately, there's cause for concern. Let's tap back lower left-hand corner of the screen, scroll down and tap manage your assistant. This is where you can choose what Fit data is shared with Google Assistant. Theoretically, it could be helpful if you're using your Google Fit ecosystem to help improve your sleep. Let's tap back lower left-hand corner of the screen and talk about another sleep feature by tapping Manage Personalization Options Sleep Suggestions. You'll get personal suggestions for a better night's sleep if you turn on Sleep Suggestions. Again, if you don't want your Google ecosystem to be, you know, keeping an eye on all of your sleeping, turn this off. And let's tap back lower left-hand corner of the screen. Scroll down down to fit data permissions and tap manage permissions. Do you want Google to have access to your vitals data or your menstrual cycle data? That sounds a little scary, no thanks. These settings ultimately come down to how much you want the Google ecosystem to help you with your health and fitness. If you're someone who's not that concerned about it, you can just come in here and turn all this stuff off. As much as this is designed to be helpful at this point, our medical providers aren't exactly using this data to help us, so it's it's really up to you. Next, we're gonna talk about how the information stored in your Google account is shared with other people. Let's tap back lower left-hand corner of the screen, back again to our data and privacy page. Scroll down to info you can share with others and tap on your profile. Here's where you can pick and choose what information you want other people to see when you use Google services. For instance, if you use Gmail, you might want other people to be able to see your profile picture. But you might not want them to know your birthday. And if you scroll further down this page, you probably don't want them to have access to your address either. And bear in mind that spammers will use this feature to get your attention by making their picture beautiful women or men. To change who can see your profile information or to remove some of that information, let's scroll down. I'll tap on address for instance. I can select only you or anyone, or I can just remove my address entirely and not have that stored in my Google account at all. I think it's another privacy issue if you share things like your birthday and your address with people, because a lot of password reset prompts will ask you first for your birthday. Let's head back to the data and privacy tab, scroll down, and one below profile is location sharing, tap on that. Make sure you aren't sharing your location with anyone that doesn't need it. If you see someone in this list you want to remove, just tap the stop button next to their name and you're done. Let's tap back upper left hand corner of the screen and we're gonna scroll down to third party apps with account access, tap on that. These are apps that you've allowed access to at least some of your data. 
Let's tap on each one and find out if there's any data we don't want to be sharing with them. Right now I have Comedy Central, PlayStation Network, and Slack. So Comedy Central, for example, I wanted to watch a South Park episode on my computer. I had to log in with my YouTube TV account to watch it because they need to verify that I actually pay for cable. If I tap on Comedy Central, I can remove access. So maybe I cancel my YouTube TV subscription. I don't want Comedy Central to keep having access to my Google account. We can tap remove access and then tap OK. You can always just give it access again if you ever need to use Comedy Central again in the future. Next, we're gonna scroll down to this signing in with Google section. Google has made it really easy to log into new accounts using your existing Google account. I do like that feature, but these apps can view your name, your email address, your profile picture, and sometimes even more. Look through this list and see if there's an account you no longer use. So Doodle, I don't remember the last time I used Doodle. If I tap on that, I can tap remove access and tap okay. It's a good idea every now and then to come in here, remove account, that don't need access to your Google account. And this doesn't delete your account on Doodle's website. If you go back to Doodle, you can just reauthorize with your Google account. Let's tap back upper left-hand corner of the screen. This next tip is more of a convenience tip for you, but if we scroll down to emails from Google services, tap on manage email preferences. None of us like marketing emails or spam from companies like Google. They just clutter up your inbox. Like other big tech companies, Google just opts you in a lot of the time to receive these emails when you sign up. Looking through our list, for example, new device welcome emails. This is one we actually recommend leaving on. Leaving this on could theoretically tip you off if your Google account is logged into a brand new device. But things like maps, insights, and promotional emails from Google Photos, I don't need those. I'll turn off those switches. And if you aren't sure about a setting you see on your phone, leave us a comment below and we'll be sure to help you out. But most of the time, the answer is going to be to turn it off. Let's tap back upper left hand corner of the screen to the data and privacy tab. Scroll down until you see delete a Google service. Tap on that. You'll be prompted to enter your password. Look through your list of services and delete the ones you no longer need. For example, I didn't even know I had a blogger account, so I'm just going to tap that trash can and delete that blogger data. And then I'll tap delete blogger profile to check off this box. I totally read the terms and conditions there and you're all set. That's it for the data and privacy tab, but we're not done yet because there are several security options you need to turn on to keep your account secure. But before we talk about those, we want to talk about our members program. If you click that join button down below, you'll get access to a whole lot of great things like shout outs, custom badges and emojis and PDFs for some of our big settings videos like this one. We are going to make a PDF for your Google privacy settings video. So click that join button right away and you'll have that guide so you can follow along. Let's tap back upper left hand corner of the screen. We're heading to the security tab. The first thing to take a look at here is two-step verification. It is 2023. You need to turn on two-step verification. Remember earlier when we were talking about signing into other Google services? Well, if this isn't turned on and someone gets your password, they have access not just to your Google account, but all those other services too. If two-step verification is off on your phone, tap on it and then follow the on-screen prompts. These days, there are a lot of things you can do. There's SMS, there's authenticator apps, and there's security keys. We made an entire video about security keys that work on both iPhones and Android phones. There's a link to that in the description below and a card up above. Also keep in mind that since Elon Musk changed the two-step verification rules for Twitter, a lot of fake authenticator apps have hit the app store markets. Stick to Google Authenticator or Authy. And we'll stick links to those in the description section too. The next thing to be aware of in the security tab in your Google account is enhanced safe browsing. Enhanced safe browsing helps protect you from malicious downloads, websites, and extensions. If you share your device with somebody else, like a child or somebody who might be prone to scams, maybe they're very gullible, it's a good idea to turn this on. But sometimes these enhanced security features can be a bit overkill and they'll end up blocking downloads or websites that you actually need or want. To toggle enhanced safe browsing on or off, just tap on manage enhanced safe browsing and toggle this switch on or off depending on what you want to do. Next, we're gonna tap back scroll up and tap on the people and sharing tab. A lot of these settings here in people and sharing have already touched on them, but there's one really important one you need to know about. And that is share recommendations in ads. On your device, scroll down until you see share recommendations in ads. We're gonna tap on manage shared endorsements. Do you want Google to use your profile name, your photo and your activity as endorsements in advertisements? I would if I was getting a cut, 
but I'm not. Theoretically, this could be used to track you. Maybe you show up in an ad for a coffee shop and then somebody says, oh, David really likes this coffee shop. I'm just going to go hang out there until I see him. I, that's a big problem for me. I can't, I can't, can't go anywhere. Can't go anywhere these recognized. days. The paparazzi are all over me. Or maybe you're an employee of another coffee shop, but you hate the coffee there. What are they going to think? Maybe you're applying for jobs. Yeah. On this shared endorsements page, scroll down and uncheck the box and you're all set. While we wouldn't recommend sharing your recommendations in Google Ads, we would really appreciate it if you could just share this video with your friends on Facebook or other social media. Just click that share button below this video. And once you've done that, check out one of these next two videos to learn if your iPhone or Android is being tracked.